Alright, so now that I've got most of my office, good morning by the way, kind of straightened up, I'm just kind of doing some reorganizing and uh, I'm going to run over to Big Lots and get some bins and stuff, check all that out. Is that beautiful? By the way, I've got a hand coming on, a hand, a grip, like a handle. So when I bought this, it didn't have like a handle, like this type of handle. So I just bought one on B&H, so that's on its way, should get here next week. Gonna have three perfectly pristine working tripods, a shoulder mount, stabilizer, and that thing. That thing, you know what? I'll probably always keep this because it legit got me into like, I don't know. It helped me with filmmaking in a lot of ways. I used it on my sh on one of my shoots. My very first shoot, uh, f short film that I did was Prey uh, with Evan and Claire. I used it with that and that stabilizer. Also, can we just take a minute to appreciate how good Ed Sheeran's new album is? It's great. So I don't know if I ever told you, but I grew up on old movies. I say old movies, I'm not talking like 80s and 90s or even 70s or even 60s. I'm talking like 30s and 40s old movies, yeah. I'm talking like black and white, record sounding audio, but I mean, I love those movies, still. Turner Classic Movies, TCM, has started to release a lot of those old movies on DVD. Mom just picked this up. It's a Humphrey Bogart collection. Key Largo, I've been wanting to watch that. I've only seen it once, and it's really good. If you guys haven't seen it, you really need to watch Key Largo, okay? A lot of these are really good too. Dark Passage, I'm not sure if I've seen that one. I know I've seen The Big Sleep. Didn't uh, have and to have not. I've seen like three of the four of these. I've probably seen Dark Passage too. These are all Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. All right, so I'm gonna meet Abby at Big Lots because she's, we're getting her, uh, we got her like this rocking chair for the nursery for the baby. That's pretty exciting. <sighs> all right, and uh, I'm gonna try to pick up some bins at uh, Big Lots so I can like store, organize things more efficiently. Yeah. I think I already said that, probably did. Oh no! That's never, never good. Is it bad that when I see the streets looking like that, I'm just kind of like, eh, that's kind of normal. I mean, it's Florida. Disclaimer, I'm going to be talking about The Founder. If you don't want to hear my movie review, then skip to right here. <clears throat> I haven't had a McDonald's hamburger in forever. Probably since I was in single digits. Why am I eating one now? Dramatics. The Founder. I never got the chance to review it, and I really wanted to talk about it because I actually honestly thought it was a great, great movie. That's not bad, but it's not that good. It doesn't make the top 10 burgers I've ever had, I'll be honest. It's just a double with cheese and ketchup and mustard and pickle. More about the movie. This was a movie that glorified capitalism. For, for good or worse, it glorified capitalism. It showed, and I had no idea, I didn't know that much about the Ray Kroc story. And I think it was very showing of how easily a free society can manipulate good things for for bad basically and that's the case with anything you know whether it's free or you know not free but 
This whole idea of capitalism was genius to me. It was beautiful. The thing that you noticed most about the McDonald's brothers and Ray Kroc was just this sheer on drive to not give up, especially with Ray Kroc. The McDonald's brothers on a lesser sense, but they still had that drive. It was pretty amazing. But Ray Kroc was just a sheer determined man who was not going to give up on this dream he had of having of turning the McDonald's restaurant into a multi, you know, in his day, million dollar corporation and franchising it like all over the place. And the way he did it was genius. And all the people who surrounded him were just like him. He made sure that he got people who were just like he was, hungry, you know, had dead end jobs. Um, he was a milkshake salesman, blender salesman, and he comes across, you know, the, if you all know the story, the McDonald's brothers, they ask him for eight, and he's never sold that many to one person in his life, so he drives out there to take a look at what, why would they need eight, you know? So he sees how fast they're selling through things. The way the story, now as for as the, that's just the story. It's definitely a docudrama. I love docudramas, I don't know about anyone else, but aviator chaplain uh now the founder uh a lot of those movies wolf of wall street they're all docudramas you know stories that tell the real life of an actual person to me those are always super interesting to me because it's a real story but it's and and for the most part it's everything in it is real with exceptions for a few minor details I find those is very inspiring it showed definitely how much of a shortcoming he came as a as an actual husband and uh, almost as just a humanitarian in that you know he pushed the McDonald's brothers basically completely out of this game even though you know he did when they did leave they left with a million dollars a piece you know they probably they would have never seen that type of money in their lifetime had he not done this did that make it right absolutely not but he did take care of them even after he basically shoved him out of the business. I thought it was just a fantastic movie. There wasn't anything that stood out about the way it was shot. The cinematography was, you know, it was just, it was good. It was, it's a solid. It wasn't artistic. It was a solid movie, which to me that shows an essence of a good movie. It doesn't say, hey, look at these shots and things. You know, everything was subtle, which is a mark of a good movie for me. I really enjoyed that movie. Really, really enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Uh, B.J. Novak is in it. Um, that one other guy from The Office is in it. All of those sitcom TV shows, you know, a lot of those characters are in it in the movie as well. Michael Keaton does a fantastic job as playing Ray Kroc. Just a fantastic job. So that's my review of The Founder. I'll leave you guys with that and I'm left with this burger. I would have really liked to try a burger from back then. I bet it would have been a lot better than this. You got a milkshake too. That's pretty good. All right, made it home. Got some stuff for to fix up my office and kind of just uh, make it a bit better. Add this guy onto that socket because now I can have six. All right, so leaving for fencing now. Apparently all the lights went out there, so they are fencing in the dark. So I'm taking some of my studio lights to help them out. I don't know what happened. They said the bathroom light works, but all the overhead lights are gone. Who knows? Very odd. So Brian plugged in his laptop and the whole building just shut down because he's got like an, an Alienware. It's got like two GTX 1080s in it. You wish.
So tonight was crazy. Thankfully those uh, lights I had worked out really, really well, which is, it's, I'm, I'm glad I had them in the car or else uh, fencing would have been, had to been canceled. Yeah, that, that all worked out really well. I got frozen pizza. I know this is probably one of the worst that, one of the worst things I could get to eat right now, but it's fast, it's quick, it's cheap. Sometimes you just need something fast, quick, and cheap. I need to start being more healthy though. Mm, I gotta get in better shape. I really wanted to go to the gym. Maybe I'll go to the gym tomorrow. I'm really happy with all the progress I got done in my office today. I got a lot of stuff organized and a lot of stuff taken care of that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. That's a good thing. <laughs>